ChemTalk, The Electronic Behavior of Atoms, Bohr's Model of an Atom, Electron Orbits. Niels Bohr was a brilliant Danish physicist. He proposed a planetary model of the atom. He theorized that electrons travel in nearly circular paths called orbits around the nucleus. Each electron orbit has a definite amount of energy. The farther away the electron is from the nucleus, the greater is its energy. Bohr suggested the revolutionary idea that electrons jump between energy levels, orbits, in a quantum fashion. This means that they can never exist in an in-between level. Thus, when an atom absorbs or gives off energy, as in light or heat, the electron jumps to higher or lower orbits. Electrons are the most stable when they are at lower energy levels closer to the nucleus. And here's a picture of Niels Bohr, by the way. The electromagnetic spectrum. You observed light when hydrogen gas was given a large voltage. This visible light is only one part of the electromagnetic spectrum. You have probably heard of some of the other parts. These include ultraviolet, infrared, x-rays, gamma rays, microwaves, and radio waves. As you demonstrated in calculations using Bohr's model, the light from some of the transitions is in the ultraviolet region. Infrared light is also emitted as the electron jumps from E4 to E3 and E5 to E3 and other high energy levels. Okay, that's these levels right here, right? The electrons are jumping back and forth between E3, E4, and E5. Many people do not think of radio waves as being similar to light waves. However, they are part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Your eyes can only see a very small part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Often you hear radio announcers say that they are broadcasting at a certain frequency. Your FM radio dial may have megahertz printed on the side. This tells you that the numbers correspond to frequencies in units of megahertz or 10 to the 6th power hertz. These are the same. Megahertz means 10 to the 6th power hertz. Uh, and if you remember from our discussion of hertz, 1 hertz equals 1 wave per second. So what would 10 to the 6th power hertz be? How many waves per second? Well, 10 to the 6th power is a million. So this is a million waves every second. Frequency tells you the number of cycles or waves that are being produced per second. The unit for frequency is a hertz. 1 hertz equals 1 cycle per second, which equals 1 second to the negative first power. Normally, frequency is read as per second, and the cycles are dropped from the terminology. Wavelength is the distance, oops, go away. Wavelength is the distance from crest to crest of a wave. The symbol for wavelength is lambda, the Greek letter lambda. The speed of electromagnetic radiation is constant, and it is called the speed of light, and its symbol is the letter C. Its value is 2.998 times 10 to the 8th power meters per second. This is often approximated to 3.00 times 10 to the 8th power meters per second. 
Frequency and wavelength are related through the speed of light. C equals lambda f. From this information, you can calculate the frequency of light of a given wavelength. The equation that is used for this is frequency is equal to the speed of light divided by lambda, the wavelength. As an example, if the wavelength is 434.2 nanometers, then the frequency is well, here's the formula for frequency. Remember, frequency is speed of light divided by wavelength. Frequency equals speed of light divided by wavelength. And when you punch that into the calculator, you get 6.905 times 10 to the 14th power cycles per second. Remember, cycles per second, that's what Hertz is. So the frequency is 6.9 point, uh, so, sorry, 6.905 times 10 to the 14th power Hertz. As you go across the electromagnetic spectrum, you should note that the wavelength continues to get smaller as the frequency increases. Also, you should understand that the energy of the spectrum increases as you go from radio waves to X-rays or gamma rays. Max Planck, a German physicist, found that light comes in fixed packets called photons. The energy of a specific wavelength or frequency of light can be calculated. The equation he developed is E equals hf, where h is Planck's constant and is 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th joules seconds, joule seconds, and f is the frequency. So if you ever want to know the energy of a wave, all you have to do is take its frequency and multiply that by h. Well, how are you going to figure out what h is? h is easy because it's always the same. It's a constant. It's a constant. And it's always 6.63. So, if you want to know the energy of a wave, just multiply its frequency by 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th. So the corresponding energy of the red light above would be E equals HF. And they're talking about this red light, by the way, with wavelength 434.2 nanometers. So if you want to find the energy of that wave, just multiply 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th times 4.567. Oh man, where are they getting 4.567 from? OK, this is all messed up. Let's, uh, let's use this instead. Okay, the equation Max Planck developed was E equals HF, where H is Planck's constant, uh, and Planck's constant is always 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th power joule seconds, and F is the frequency. Okay, so our example. The frequency of a particular kind of red light, a particular shade, is 4.567 times 10 to the 14th power hertz. 
which is lower than blue light. Okay, the frequency of red light should be lower than blue light. So what is the energy of this kind of red light? Well, we can calculate that. And all we have to do to find the energy is multiply the frequency by Planck's constant. So what do we get when we multiply 6.63 times 10 to the 34th power times 4.567 times 10 to the 14th power? Well, just in case you can't do that in your head, I encourage you to go to uh, Desmos dot com slash scientific desmos dot com slash scientific and you'll get this thing and the way I would type this in is do parentheses 6.6 .6 3 times 10 to the 34th power. Now, in case you don't know how to do that, you type in 10, and then this is the power button. And what is the power? It's negative 34. It's a negative power, so it's a very, very small number. And then I don't want to type in any more numbers here because if I did, then that would continue to add that to the exponent. And I don't want that. So use the right arrow and just hit right arrow and it'll get out of that exponent thing. And then you can type another parenthesis. So again, when you're done typing this exponent, hit the right arrow and it'll take you out of exponent mode. So there's that, and then I want to multiply this by my frequency of red light. So here's Planck's constant, and now I just need to multiply the frequency of red light, which is 4.567 times 10 exponent 14, which means it's a very big number because it's a positive exponent. Oops. Remember, if I want to get out of exponent mode, I got to hit the right arrow. Boom. Now I'm out of exponent mode. Do another parentheses. And the answer is 3.027921 times 10 to the negative 19th power. And don't be afraid of this scientific notation. Okay, just remember, it's just a lazy way of writing 0.0000000000000000000003. We're just saying, hey, in the answer there's a 3, and then a 0, and a 3, 303. And then before that, there should be 18 zeros. I know it says 19 here, but... Remember, the, the decimal point is on, on this side, so it's actually 18 zeros over here. All right, so now why don't you try one? Let's say the frequency of yellow light is... 5.25 times 10 to the 14th hertz. What is the energy of this light? And what are the units of energy? Well, it's joules, right? Uh, what is the energy of this light in joules? 
So your answer should be in joules. Actually, whenever the question is how much energy, then the units should be joules. All right, so what equation are you going to use? You're going to use E equals HF and oops. What is H going to be? Well, H is always the same. H is always 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th power joule seconds times, and you don't have to put this uh, multiplication symbol here. If there's no symbol there, then we just assume that it's multiplication. Now what is this number going to be over here? We're going to multiply Planck's constant times what? Yeah, frequency. And the frequency here is 5.25 times 10 to the 14th. Now make sure you make this a superscript, folks. 10 to the 14th power is very different from 1014. All right, so let's go over to Desmos. Geez, I wonder if we could be lazy and just copy this in there. What do you think? Mm, not quite. Um, this needs to be like that. And we'll delete this. I think the units are confusing for the calculator. And this is an exponent. Uh, it still doesn't like that. Well, let's replace this with multiplication signs. Oh, there we go. And the answer is 3.48 times 10 to the 19th power. to the negative 19th. And what's the units going to be? Well, it's energy, so it's going to be in joules. So, the next time that you are standing around a campfire, you can inform your fellow campers that red light has less energy than blue light. You can also tell them how to calculate these values. Don't you feel smart? So let's look at this more elaborate example. In hydrogen, the energy change of an electron transitioning from level E3 to level E2 is 3.03 .03 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. So remember our levels? Okay, when, when an electron moves from E3 to E2, so this is E3. Let's say it's uh, hanging out there, although it's not really hanging out. The only reason it would be up here right now is if it had recently absorbed a bunch of energy. Okay, maybe this is a better example. So the energy comes in. Let's say the electron is uh, down here. 
and the energy comes in and the electron absorbs that energy and it goes up to E3 but it's only for a for a a millisecond okay and then immediately that electron gets rid of that energy and comes back down to E2 and that transition from E3 to E2 costs 3.03 .03 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Well, where does that energy go? Well, that goes to making electromagnetic energy. Now, is there any way for us to tell what kind of electromagnetic energy that is? Well, yeah. There's a there's a there's a color or a frequency that is associated with that amount of energy. So if we know that the energy spent is 3.03 .03 times 10 to the negative 19 joules, we just need to use our equation to convert it to a frequency using math. So 3.03 uh, well, let's see. You know what I'd rather do is I'd rather set up the equation for frequency. If we're trying to find frequency, what's that equation going to be? Well, we just do a little bit of algebra, right? We divide both sides by H, and we get F equals E divided by H. So if the energy is... What was it? 3.03 .03 times 10 to the negative 19. And H is, what's H? It's always the same. It's always 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34. And if we start using the asterisk, which is how the computer denotes multiplication, and we get these ready. Well, when we copied and pasted it last time, it didn't remember our exponents, did it? Oh well. Go ahead and put that in there, and then just make this an exponent, and this an exponent. Hmm, that doesn't look right. I think I did something wrong. Ugh, oh, I didn't follow my own equation. It's not e times h, it's e divided by h. Oh, don't do that. There we go. That looks much better. 4.57 times 10 to the 14th. What's the units going to be? Well, if it's frequency, it's going to be in hertz, right? All right, so now we know our, OK, and now we know our frequency. How do we find the wavelength? Well, we have an equation that shows the relationship between frequency and wavelength and speed of light. 
Now one thing that I think you realized from that electrons and light activity is that the speed of light is always the same. The speed of light is always this or this. This is more accurate, but this is easier to remember. 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And this is the one I always use, by the way. 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So we can't change that because the speed of light is always 3 times uh, 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. We can't change that. So because this is fixed, that means that when frequency gets bigger, wavelength must get smaller. And when wavelength gets bigger, frequency must get smaller. And that's concurrent with what you guys found out in that activity, isn't it? You guys figured out that when frequency gets higher, wavelength gets lower. And when wavelength gets higher, frequency gets lower. So you just you found that out already. This is just the equation for that. So let's go ahead and find the wavelength. C equals frequency times wavelength. And if you want to use the lambda symbol, by the way, you can just go to insert special characters. And you can just type lambda. It's not really the lambda that I want. It usually gives me several different ones. Like this one. Greek small. Okay, so Greeks have uppercase and lowercase, just like us. And there it is. So speed of light equals frequency times wavelength. In fact, I can just use that symbol. And we will know that that's wavelength. We have frequency, and we have speed of light, and we need to find wavelength. So let's just do some algebra. We divide both sides by the frequency. And then we get wavelength equals C divided by frequency. And that's the same as 3.0 times 10 to the 8th power. Divided by, don't want to make the same mistake twice. What's the frequency? The frequency is 4.57 times 10 to the 14th. Hertz. All right, and if you type that in properly, come on, calculator. Oh, doesn't like X's. It only likes. No, <laughs> oh. that's stupid. <laughs> the symbol for multiplication is X, but if you type in X, it doesn't accept it. <sighs> Technology. All right, just to make sure that that's registering properly. Let's make it the same. And the answer, this should be the answer. Now, does it look right? Well, I don't know. What does it say? Lambda wavelength equals 6.5 times 10 to the negative 7. 
six by five times. Well, there it is. That's what it is. Six by five. Comes ten to the negative seven. And it's wavelength, so what's the units going to be? Meters. We're measuring the length of a wave, so it's going to be in meters. So what color of light would that be? If this electron moves from E3 to E2, Let's predict what color of light is going to be made. Specifically, what's the exact um, wavelength of the light? Well, we know the wavelength. What color is it going to be? 6.5 times 10 to the negative 7. If we go to Wikipedia, and do 6. Point five. Hmm. We're going from four hundred to seven hundred, but we're looking for six point five. What does that mean? Well, remember, we're looking for six point five times ten to the negative seven. These values are in nanometers. And I wouldn't expect you to have this memorized, but a nanometer is um, one times ten to the negative nine meters. A nanometer is 1 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. So what would this be if we put it in nanometers? Well, it would be 650. times 10 to the negative 9 meters or 650 nanometers. Which color is 650 nanometers? Well, that would be a, a shade of red, wouldn't it? Six hundred fifty nanometers would be a shade of red. So, if the electron was moving from E3 to E2, it would emit a shade of red at 650 nanometers. And this is the red light that we talked about in our activity. All right, now let's talk about the photoelectric effect. Light has wave-like properties like wavelength and frequency, so it behaves like waves. These wave-like properties were seen in the activity that we did as we observed the spectrum of hydrogen. Light also has particle-like properties like momentum and can be seen in collisions with matter. So. These, this is kind of strange, and this really confused scientists for a long time, and they would have arguments over whether light is a particle or light is a wave. And the reason that they had these arguments is because light has some wave-like properties. So scientists who discovered these wave-like properties, they were going around telling everybody that light is a wave. But scientists that discovered these particle-like properties, they were going around telling everybody that light is a particle. And there was some debate that ensued. Now we know that both of these things are true. Light in some ways behaves like a wave 
and in some ways behaves like a particle. The photoelectric effect is a collision between a particle of light, a photon, and an electron on the surface of a metal. The energy of this photon is calculated using the equation E equals HF. The energy of light is quantized. That means that it comes in fixed amounts. It can be one, or it can be two, or it can be three, but it can't be anything in between. You can't have part of a light packet or part of a photon. In Einstein's explanation of the photoelectric effect, he showed that light must behave like a particle with fixed energies that depend on the frequency. For this he was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1921. The problem with Bohr's atomic theory. Niels Bohr was aware that his theory of electron jumps had incredible success, but also raised some problems. Bohr's theory could only account for the spectrum of hydrogen. It could not account for the spectra of any other element. Bohr's theory could not explain why only certain orbits were allowed. It could also not explain how the electron could jump from one orbit to another. Other scientists improved on Bohr's model as they discovered more about the atom and quantum mechanics. So really quickly before I shoot those questions at you, I just want to point out that Niels Bohr, he was the, he was the first one to think of an atom like this with all these different energy levels. He was the first one to come up with this. The idea that electrons orbit the nucleus like planets orbit the sun. And it turns out to not be a very perfect model, but this is not how atoms actually look. But it's, it's a useful cartoon for us to understand the concept of energy levels. So again, this is not how it looks, but it's useful for us to talk about these different energy levels.